morning, everybody. Monday morning. Monday has rolled around the corner again. Are you excited? Isn't it just the best day of the week? Come on, guys. Let's go outside. Come on. Let's get out of here. Hey, Diesel. Come on, old man. We've been a little bit concerned about Diesel, and I should probably let you guys know. Um, He's going to be 13 this year. He's had some pretty stiff hips for quite a while already. But there's been a bit of a new development on his stomach. Oh, he's got a patch where he's lost a bunch of fur and there's a black dot in the center of that patch. And we think it might be cancer. We haven't gotten it checked out yet. Uh, he's doing fine right now. We have plans to bring him to the vet to get it checked out. He's eating still, he's going to the bathroom just fine right over there. But uh, seeing as a lot of you are pretty invested in his life, and you followed him for his entire life since he was 10 weeks old over the past 12, 13 years. He's doing okay right now. He's back there, but his check engine light has started to come on a couple of times. We're getting a little bit worried about him. Now he's an old man, so you know that time is coming. It'll be in the next couple of years. Hopefully not too soon, but that's where we're at right now. How you feeling, Diesel? Yeah? You feeling all right? You're still a pretty good weight. You've lost a little bit of weight, though. I'm just noticing that now. Still healthy, though. A lot of gray hairs. Wisdom hairs. Sorry, wisdom hairs. Yeah, you doing all right, man? Yeah, we're gonna take good care of you, buddy. We're gonna keep you nice and comfy, okay? Nothing wrong with getting old. Okay. Be right here. So you've probably seen before he's got these patches of no hair on his chest, right? That was actually from uh, a procedure the last time he was at his vet. Uh, they had to shave the hair there to check his heart. He has a uh, uh, irregular, uh, what's that called again? Heart's not, uh, not beating exactly correctly. It's not life-threatening or anything in itself, but uh, yeah, they had to check that. That's why he has these patches missing on his chest, and they just never grew back. But he's got another, another patch, a little further closer to his back near his undercarriage. I won't show you for his own privacy reasons, but that's where uh, uh, that patch is. And it's got like a little black dot in the center of it. You know, it looks like skin cancer. So, like I said, we're going to go talk to the vet about it, see what our best course of action is. He's a really old guy already, so uh, we'll just make sure that he's as comfortable as possible. If there is a procedure we can go through, we'll uh, look at those options then. Uh, there might, maybe they can get it out easily, but seeing as he's so old, I, I don't know if I want to take any risks with that. But we'll, we'll talk to the professionals and see what they say. We'll take care of you, Weasel. You're a good boy. You've lived quite the exciting life, you know. You've seen places some dogs, most dogs, only just dream about. Been by my side for a long time. And now you're enjoying retirement. This is his retirement right here. In this big yard to relax in, eh? I can't take him in the truck with me anymore. Uh, he can't get up the steps even. Like I have those special dog steps for him. He can't even get up those anymore. And when he is in my truck, uh, you can tell he's just not enjoying himself like he used to. He used to love going on the truck. And now, uh, you can tell, it's just, he's not living his best life out there on the road anymore. And he loves being at home here. And you know, he's got Britt and all of his brothers here. 24 seven and pretty much in the summertime, he can just lay out here under the tree all day, enjoying his fresh air and you know, living his best life. I think he deserves that after, you know, everything he's done for me and he's been with me every day of my life for so long. He deserves to have a nice, relaxing retirement. All right, so I'm gonna go grab my truck, go grab my trailer. Uh, remember, we gotta fix those straps yet before we leave, and then we're gonna take that load that we have waiting for us to Humboldt, Saskatchewan. I almost forgot to update you on Myrtle. She's struggling a little bit. Uh, she didn't take to being transplanted very, very well. And it's been really windy, and a couple of days this last week, it was really hot as well. So, 
The bottom leaves here, these all stay pretty much green, right? Completely green. But above the fence line where the wind gets a little bit heavier, you can see that some of the, a lot of the leaves have blown off there and they've turned yellow. About half of them have turned yellow at the top there. So, that's the update on Myrtle. Hopefully it's just the shock from being transplanted and she'll pull through. But, uh, I'll see how she looks next week. You can do it, Myrtle. You can do it. Alright, now it's time to go to the truck. Gotta be in Humboldt tonight. Put an eight hour drive. It's not too far. All right, everybody, we're here and we are gonna start having some fun. We're about to go trucking, but we have to uh, correct something first. So this is my load and I really appreciate it that whoever picked it up left it tied down for me. That is awesome, especially those center ones because there's no way I could get that through there uh, afterwards. Like you, you put those straps on as you get loaded, right? So I do appreciate that. The one thing we do have to correct though is that uh, <clears throat> these straps were placed over the rub rail and you know me me that's a no-no for me going down the road so it's totally cool uh it'll take like 10 10 15 minutes to fix it not even 10 minutes to fix it you just gotta loosen these all up and then you'll slip it through the rub rail there where it's supposed to go this side was done properly inside the rub rail they're all nice and tight like there's nothing wrong with the securement on here the load's not gonna go anywhere with it tied down like this it's just that this rub rail's purpose is to protect your straps if another truck or a car loses control beside you or something happens and there's a an object that scrapes along the side of your trailer while you're on the highway now what do you think would happen if something like someone lost control you know people are crazy out there you, you gotta be careful keep your head up keep your head on the swivel keep your eyes on the road pay attention to people there people are crazy what happens when these crazy people come up beside you, you know, they're lose control, hydroplane or something. Maybe they're not crazy. Maybe it's just an honest accident. You get it. Something happens anyways. And they're, they're losing control beside you. And then they, they come up and they go, boom, they bump up against the side of your trailer and they rub all the way along the side of your trailer like this, over that, over that, and over this. <laughs> all these straps get ripped off then. Suddenly all of these pipes are not secured. And you're going 100 kilometers an hour down the highway, 60 miles an hour, with your load not secured. And suddenly you got a whole highway full of pipes. Right? Worst case scenario. Some people might say, oh, that would never happen. <laughs> never say never. I've seen crazier stuff happen out on the highways. I haven't been doing this as long as some of you guys. Uh, 17 years now, driving truck. 13 years over the highway here. I've seen some stuff. Okay? I've seen some stuff in that time. <laughs> Never say it can't happen. It can happen. So the precaution you take is uh, never put your straps over the outside of your railing if you can help it. One or two here and there. Sometimes that's the only place you can secure your trailer. Some trailers don't even have a rub rail. That confuses me because that to me is very important. But some trailers have no rub rail. You have to. I get it. There's, there's exceptions. It's not the rule. But uh, like this, I do believe it is a... Uh, when there is a possibility to put it through the rub rail, I believe this is an infraction. And uh, if you were to get pulled in, you would get a ticket for every single one that's outside the rub rail. And it's not just this side, the other side is like that as well. I have uh, I have friends actually who have gotten tickets for that before. Some people say, oh, you're not going to get a ticket for that. Again, it depends on the ambitions and uh, what, the attitude and mood of the DOT officer that's doing your inspection. I, I know people that have gotten tickets for straps outside the rub rail. That's why I started warning you guys because suddenly I, I knew someone who this happened to. So I'm like, oh, I better warn the rest, warn the others. So we're warning you guys, okay? It has happened before. For every strap over the rub rail, he got an infraction. I think it was, it was pretty steep too. It was something like $200 or something per strap over the rub. It was, it was something crazy like that. So I'm not the knower of all things. I'm not claiming to know everything, but I'm just going to quickly slip these things just inside here and then we'll be on our way. It's only going to take 10 minutes to fix, so I'm not even upset about it. And some people, and it's an honest mistake, some people just, they, they, they don't know. They haven't been taught that yet. So that's what I'm here for. I'm teaching you now. Inside the rub rail, whenever possible. All right, so I 
pulled it out here into the open a little bit. Sorry about the wind noise if there is some here. It's pretty simple to fix these. So I'm just gonna take this one, put it through there. Take this one, put it through there. Easy as that. One at a time. And you don't have to completely unsecure the load. And you tighten it back up. And it takes no time at all. Nice and tight. There you go. Now I gotta continue to do that for every other one. All right, that took half an hour, not 10 minutes. But we got them all inside the rub rails now. Tighten down good and tight. Got my aluminum wipe wiped down. Got my stainless steel. Okay, this is going to humble. And so are we. Coincidentally. Flying J in Headingley, Manitoba, just west of Winnipeg. Gonna fill ourselves up with fuel here, get ourselves a good shower credit that we're gonna take advantage of when we get to Flying J, Saskatoon. We should be in that area tonight. So Humboldt is just east of Saskatoon. So we'll deliver that in the morning, then we'll head over to Saskatoon, shower up, clean up. I gotta you know, clean myself up a little bit. And then we're heading to Nisku, Alberta, just south of Edmonton. I gotta pick up a load there, and then we're gonna be bouncing back and forth between Calgary and Edmonton and that whole area there for the rest of the week until Saturday, which is when the Big Rig Expo is. If you guys were there, it was great to meet you. I don't know if you're watching this after that event, but June 22nd, 2024 is the Big Rig Expo. I'm gonna be there along with our recruiters. We're looking for owner operators to join our motorsport division, which you've seen it in my past videos. It's dry van at two levels, double deckers. It's uh, it's definitely not any no-touch freight. It's in a dry van, but uh, you gotta set up the ramps, which could be pretty heavy. Uh, keeps you in shape though, keeps you moving. I always liked it because it always you know, got me out of my seat, got me out of my truck, and got me physically working. So it could be like a free gym membership. Man, they gotta set up the ramps, and uh, we're looking for owner operators that wanna join the motorsports. So that's what we're doing out there in Calgary. Once that's done, I'll be headed back this way. So far, it's been quite the rainy day. We're on Yellowhead Highway 16, the other Trans Canada. There's only two in Western Canada. Pointed westbound, we're just about at the Saskatchewan border. So the next big town we'll be going through will be Yorkton. I've called the customer where we're delivering and uh, they've given us coordinates to where they need us in the morning. We're able to sleep right on site there, as far as I uh, understand. I don't know if I'll go right to the site. There are two other trucks that are getting unloaded before me by the sounds of it. And I'm in no rush because I don't have a reload right away. So I'm gonna let those other two guys be unloaded before me. So they're gonna start up around seven o'clock. Uh, probably about an hour to unload each truck. So I'm thinking they'll probably get to me around nine. And I'm in no rush, like I said. So we'll get unloaded, then we'll wander over to uh, Saskatoon, have a shower, clean ourselves up, go for a walk maybe first. And then I've got to run over to Nisku, which is just south of Edmonton, for the following morning. So no real big rush. It's, uh, it's probably, what, about another seven hour drive or so? Coming up to the border, you'll see the Manitoba sign on the left and then the Saskatchewan sign up here on the right. Now leaving Manitobers. Crossing border, entering Saskatchewan, changing time zone. We've now entered Saskatchewan. I see that. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or not, 
okay? Let's put that disclaimer out there. But I've noticed since I mentioned in that video a few weeks ago or a couple months ago that I was sick of seeing all these bumper stickers and stickers graffitiing up all of our provincial signs that welcome you to our province. I thought it looked so disgusting and I was so insulted that people would do that, that they would, in my view, vandalize our provincial sign by putting some kind of sticker or bumper sticker on it when they come visit our province as like a, hey, I was here. We don't want that. That looks so bad. Like I said, in my mind, vandalism, I thought it was terrible. So since then, it might be a coincidence, but since then, I've noticed that all of our provincial welcome signs have been cleared off of all that, all that vandalism and all those stickers. Probably just a coincidence, but if by some chance my video had something to do with that, thank you to whoever listened to me, and you're welcome, the rest of Manitoba. I'm sick of people vandalizing our welcome signs. Stop sticking your stickers on it. That's my rant for today. We did some good in the world, possibly, maybe. It probably had nothing to do with me, but I, I feel like maybe we did some good. You know, if you had like a family sedan, you could drive right underneath this guy. Another day in Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan. Totally took the wrong detour around town there. For some reason, the main drag in Yorkton has been closed for like years, what feels like. And I always go the wrong way around, so they have a detour and I took the wrong one. I had to take some gravel, but I made it. I went really slow, it just took a really long time. Didn't want to mess up my polish. I'm gonna have to find a truck wash tomorrow to get some of the dirt off my tanks though. That was from before. That wasn't from the gravel, that was from the, just the driving through the rain. Well, that time of day, or time of night, time of day night is here again. It's the middle of the night, the northern sky is still a little light out there. June 21st, longest daylight hours of the year. That's coming soon, that's not today. I'm filming this before that. You're probably watching this after that date already though, because it takes me a couple of days to put this together. We're here in this little pullout in a small town in Saskatchewan. You want to know something really cool though? I want to show you this sign right here. This is the most trucker friendly little town I've ever seen in my life. Wait till you see what's on the other side of this sign right here. Now keep in mind in Canada, it's 36 hours to get a reset on our logbooks instead of 34 like in the US, right? Check this out. So here's the parking area. And I was wondering, hmm, I see these other trucks parked there. I wonder if this is you know, for us trucks to park overnight. Can anybody park here overnight? This is the town of Watson, Saskatchewan. Look at this. Here's a little sign before you get in here. 36 hour parking limit. Need longer time for a reset schedule? You can give them a call and park your truck here even longer. But you're allowed to park here for a full reset, which is awesome. I'm not sure if you remember the truck parking that was in uh, the lower mainland of British Columbia when we went to uh, Victoria on Vancouver Island. They had this truck parking and everyone was talking about it online. Like, oh yeah, there's some truck parking there. You go there and it's 24 hour maximum. You need 36 hours to get a reset. You can't just stop for 24 hours, that's pointless. That doesn't reset your logs. So glad that in Saskatchewan here they got some common sense that us truck drivers need a full 36 hours to reset our logs on the weekends. So, thank you to Watson, Saskatchewan for thinking of us truckers and putting up this sign in this parking area here, making it available to us with some common sense. That's awesome. Because seriously, what, what, what is the point of 
making a nice big truck area. Like in BC, down in the lower mainland, there's nice paved parking, security, everything there. What's the point of making it a 24 hour maximum? Even if you're an American driver and you want to reset your logs for American hours of service, you need 34 hours off, right? 24 hours does nothing for you. So, whoever made that parking law in British Columbia obviously doesn't drive a truck, never has, and doesn't know anyone who drives a truck. Maybe they watch my videos and, I don't know, maybe we'll make a change there, you know? Maybe, maybe they'll change that to 36 hours, because that would actually make sense. But I guess we can't all be Saskatchewan. All of their common sense out here, they're hogging it all. So we're about, uh, oh, a half hour from our destination. I'm gonna get up here, uh, like I said, I'm gonna let the other two trucks get unloaded first tomorrow. So I'm expecting to get unloaded around nine, so I'm gonna show up there at about 8.30. Let the other guys get ahead of me, because they probably have loads that they need to go pick up, and I'm in no real rush, so we'll get my next load. So we'll leave here probably around 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning. Make our way down the road and uh, get unloaded and go from there. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I appreciate it. First day back on the road after the weekend. It's always the toughest day. So, like always, go down below the video, click that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the channel. If you like what I'm doing here, leave me a comment down below and a thumbs up. That uh, helps out my channel as well. Helps with the algorithm a lot when you leave comments. Go down there and uh, see some other comments that you like that other people left. You know, leave some respectful comments below there too. Start a conversation, make some friends. That's what we're all here for. We're all here for the same thing is just to hang out and get to know each other. If you want to take it one step further, you can always become a member get early access to all of my videos. You can click the join now button and it explains everything you can do to become a member there for like the price of a cup of coffee. You can get early access to my videos if that's what you would like, up to a week early, depending on how fast I can get them edited, rendered, compressed, uploaded, thumbnailed, titled, and on the internet. <laughs> There's quite a bit that goes into this. That's why it takes a little longer. Uh, I do post some short form content over on TikTok, on Instagram and Facebook. If you want to find me on those platforms, down below in the description of my video, if you're on your phone right now, flip it vertical, click on the title, and then click on the more link down below. It'll whip down a whole bunch of links for you. Keep scrolling down that more until you get to my social media. There you can find my uh, my Facebook page, my Instagram page, and my TikTok if, if you have a TikTok. If you don't use TikTok, totally understand. It's kind of a controversial platform to some people. I'm on everywhere. I, my philosophy is I want to be on the internet in every possible space there is. So as long as TikTok is still operating, I will be there as well. If you don't like that app, you'll find the exact same videos and content over on Instagram. If you'd rather the Americans spy on you uh, over the Chinese. Uh, either way, you're going to be spied on. <laughs> so let's get spied on together and come and join me on those platforms too. <laughs> Jokes aside. Jokes aside, drive safe out there. Make sure you keep your head up, head on a swivel, check your mirrors, use your turn signals, make sure all your lights are working, make sure your trailer lights are working. I've seen a couple of trailers rolling down the road with no tail lights today. Not good, not good. Somebody gonna get hurt, don't do that. Stay safe out there. We're all trying to get home to our family. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.